They say that the only two things in life that are inevitable are death and taxes. But it really feels like <laughs> aging is pretty inevitable too. But does it have to be? Okay. Or could science eventually get the better of it? We're gonna find out today. Mm -hmm. We're joined by Dr. Greg Fay, Chief Scientific Officer for Intervene Immune, who was just involved in a really interesting clinical trial that gets to the heart of this matter. Uh, welcome to the show, doctor. Thanks very much. Happy to be here. Uh, great to have you here. So um, let's let's break it down. Understand, obviously, you know, the audience is made, and I am a lay person. But what was the the clinical trial really about, and how does it get to this question of helping to reverse or at least slow down aging? The trial was really designed to see if we could do something about immune system aging, because if we don't do something about immune system aging, eventually we'll all die of immunosuppression, sort of like getting AIDS automatically, just as a function of getting old. So we wanted to stop that, and we were able to regrow the immune system in older people. But we found out as part of the side effects of that treatment that the rest of aging seemed to go along for the ride. So in other words, we were able to show, at least based on one measure of aging called epigenetic aging, that there was an actual reversal of aging process uh, pretty much globally. So you, you just mentioned this epigenetic uh, aging. Can you define that for us? Uh, yeah, so um, the epigenome is uh, uh, consists of things that are on top of the genome. In other words, things that regulate DNA things that regulate the use of your genes. And since your genes control everything that happens in your body, it's very important to be able to regulate them properly. And what we find is that the regulation of genes changes with aging, and you can measure that change and actually determine your biological age based on this thing called methylation or the methylation clock of aging. More accurately, then you can actually determine how old you are from the number of birthdays that you've had. So. The uh, uh, upshot of it is that we have a wonderful way of measuring aging. It's the gold standard, and based on the gold standard, uh, we were actually able to roll back aging. So it seems like in some circumstances, maybe epigenetic aging at least can run in reverse. Okay, so obviously fascinating, um, but I but I also obviously the next step is wondering, well, then how does this get applied to my life, and how do I mm -hmm. roll back to a time in my life when I was physically and perhaps even oh, mentally in better shape? So, um, so so how do we get to that? How far is the initial trial that you were involved in um, from you know me walking into CVS and picking up hmm. you know a prescription or something like that? Well, it's pretty far away from that because this is a very complicated thing that we're trying to do here, and there are many unknowns, and so we are actually going to be initiating another round of clinical trials uh, in the near future, probably in January of next year. Uh, and it's all gonna be doctor supervised. And we think it should be that way for the time being because we're, in a sense, we're playing with fire. I mean, aging is pretty deeply entrenched biologically. So we want to be very cautious and careful about how we deal with it. But uh, after a while, once all the bugs have been taken out of it, once the safety has been established, uh, it'll become more and more accessible. Now, Dr. Fay, when you mean when you say more and more accessible, you know, for people at home, what do you mean? Like, what could this research that we have right now eventually? What could that mean for their everyday life? Well, it could mean a lot. So, most people that die of the flu or that die of pneumonia uh, are over sixty-five, and that's because they don't have good immune systems anymore. But beyond that. Uh, we would all like to be more spry. We'd all like to maintain our youth a much longer period of time. So uh, going forward, we're beginning to, to develop real evidence that this is possible. Uh, exactly how far we can take this, we don't know, but there's a very interesting part of the study, which is that this was a one year trial. And we found that the majority of the benefit of the trial took place in the last three months. In other words, in the last three months of the trial, for every day that went by, our volunteers were getting six and a half days younger. Whereas in the first nine months, they were only getting younger by about one and a half days per day elapsed. So if this acceleration of aging reversal is really true, it may have a lot to do with the happiness that we experience later in our lives. So I guess my last question then would be about uh, potential long-term effects, even negative effects, because I have to admit I have a lot more experience throughout my life with science fiction than science. <laughs> and whenever we cure aging in those sorts of movies, uh, it generally has some negative uh, ramifications, either societally or psychologically. Was there anything, I, I know it was just a, a year study, but was there any indication of potential negative side effects? 
Well, uh, there were a couple of people whose senescent cell levels spiked up momentarily and then went back down. We didn't like that, but it's not a source of concern at this point. Uh, there were some minor side effects associated with uh, growth hormone, very typical things like joint swelling, uh, gynecomastia, having your breasts get a little bit uh, larger, even though this is an all male population. Uh, but these were minor things and the people in the trial much preferred to have the benefits of the treatment than to worry about these minor side effects. So, so far we haven't found anything that's that serious. There's always the theoretical possibility that since we're regenerating tissue, we might actually accelerate the growth of cancer. But what we found is three independent indications that our treatment actually makes cancer less likely hmm. and makes the body more able to defend against cancer. So we don't have an answer to that one either. But so far things look very good, generally speaking. Okay, well, very fascinating, especially the, the cancer angle that you just brought up too. Uh, Dr. Greg Fay, we really appreciate you joining us and, and breaking down this really interesting study for us. Thanks very much, happy to be here. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.